For instance, someone died and had no coffin, so I bought one for him and buried him. This was a good deed, but I do not tell anyone about it. In general, one will help to do good deeds without letting other people know about it. Those who did a lot of anonymous good deeds are intelligent in this lifetime. Also, if in the past, in past lives, you read Buddhist sutras frequently, such as reading the Vana, Vara Paratna Paramita Sutra several tens of thousands of times, you will be intelligent in this lifetime. Having studied a lot in the past, you will be intelligent in this lifetime too. So, intelligence is the result of anonymous good deeds. Intelligence in this lifetime comes from cultivation and virtuous deeds in life's past. Anonymous good deeds lead us onto the path of intelligence. You are intelligent because of your virtuous conduct. Virtuous conduct led you on to the path of intelligence. Try and play smart without believing in anonymous good deed. Having forgotten in this lifetime, you do not travel the path of doing good deeds. You do not believe in doing anonymous, anonymous good deeds or good deeds in general. You keep using your intelligence to commit crime. The smart ends up being misled by their smarts. Their intelligence ends up hurting themselves. Why? If you were dumb, you would not do anything bad. Since you are smart, you know what other people do not know. You hurt somebody and the victim does not even realize that you are a bad person. This is called the smart ends up being misled by their wits. For example, Kao Ko is someone most intelligent, more than even ghosts and spirits, but he did inappropriate things, though he did some good things too. He ended up being misled by his own intelligence. Of course, he did have his accomplishments. After hearing this verse, people who would like to be intelligent, to be intelligent should work hard at doing good deeds, contributing to humanity and avoiding harming others. Let me add another supplement on the parameter of keeping the precepts. When the Buddha was in the world, Two bishops wanted to go and see Shakyamuni Buddha. After traveling a long ways without encountering any water, the two bishops were extremely thirsty, so thirsty they were at the brink of death. One bishop saw a human skull with some water and said, Since we are so thirsty right now, we can drink the water in this skull. The other bishop said, no, there are insects on the water, so we should not drink it. But look at how thirsty we are. Drink this water and we will not die of thirst and we will see Shakyamuni Buddha then. If we die of thirst, then it would be impossible to see the Buddha. I would rather die from keeping the precepts and miss seeing the Buddha. I will follow the Buddha's teachings even if I have to die for it. The first bishop drank the water in the little like skull, while the other did not drink the water and died of thirst indeed. The bishop who drank the water went on ahead to see the Buddha. When he got there, he asked the Buddha. There were two of us who were extremely thirsty about halfway along the journey. We saw a human skull with water and I drank the water so that I did not have to die, so that I may come to visit the Buddha. My fellow cultivator was willing to die of thirst than drink any water because of the insects in the water. He would violate the precepts if he drank it. I drank the water and did not die. He did not drink the water and died of thirst. I get to see the Buddha. Shakyamuni Buddha said, You thought he died of thirst? Since that Vishu kept the precepts, I made it so that he got to see me first. He is already here, listening to my drama talks. Also, keeping the precepts is extremely difficult. I understand his sincerity. 
Also, you get to see me. You did not uphold the precepts, so you are not so sincere. He has already become enlightened and certified to the fruition, but you still have to cultivate over time. This tells us how we must be sincere in doing the six paramitas of precepts, patience, giving, vigor, dhyana, samadhi, and wisdom, as well as the mind that conducts. In sincere, we are casual and will not accord with the Buddha drama. We must do what is true. So, guard the mouth and gather in thoughts. Make no bodily transgressions. Never distress a sentient being. Stay far removed from unsuccessful asceticism. Practitioners like this save the world. This four line gather is something that monks and nuns should always remember. Act according to this gather. It is extremely important to keep the precepts. Do not be casual about it. Be a little bit casual and you miss the target. So cultivation requires sincerity and down to earth steps. Do not float along. Float along. Do not do it honestly. There was a sound of compassion. Kindness can bestow joy, while compassion can uproot suffering. All beings hear this voice of Shakyamuni Buddha and leave suffering and attain bliss, liberated from birth and death. The sound of joyous giving, joyously give, kindness and compassion, joy and giving are the four boundless qualities of the mind. We must be delighted when we give. Do not regret it after we give, for that would not be delight. Shakyamuni Buddha uttered this sound of joyous giving so that all beings heard it and wished to give happily. The sound of liberation. Liberation is a type of true freedom, unrestrained and unbounded. From what are we liberated? We are liberated from the suffering and afflictions of birth and death in the six paths of transmigration. Once upon a time, a monk requested a prominent Sangha member to speak the drama. He asked, Senor monk, how can we become liberated? This prominent monk said, Who tied you up? The listening monk became enlightened instantaneously. No one tied me up, I tied myself up. We are naturally liberated if we do not tie ourselves up. What does it mean by tying ourselves up? Here is where we should think things over. We are not at ease because there are things we do not see through and cannot let go. Are at ease, we are liberated. If we can see through, everything and let them go, then we are truly free. That is being unrestrained and unbounded, unhindered and unimpeded liberation that leaves mixed up dream, thinking far behind. Really, let go and attain liberation. Refuse to let go and there will be no liberation. Shakyamuni Buddha spoke with this sound of liberation. So we should liberate ourselves too. Do not tie ourselves up and lock ourselves in jail forever. How come we bind ourselves and lock ourselves up? If you were not in jail, you would be liberated. Since you are not liberated, it is as if you are in jail. You are not free to go east when you want to. You are not free to go west when you want to. You are not free to go south when you want to. You are not free to go north when you want to. Freedom does not come from this stinking skin back, but this inherent nature. An inherent nature that enjoys freedom may live if one wants, die if one wants to at any time. One may die disease-free, one simply sits there and dies. This is true freedom. At that point, birth and death is not up to fate, but up to me. I may become born if I want to. I may die if I want to. I may live until I am 100, 1000, 10,000. I may not want to become born. Then I can always stay at our original home. 
When I want to live in this house, I live in this house. When I do not want to live in this house, I can move any time. There are two explanations as to why you might want to live in this house. Your consciousness, which is yin, is free. It may travel to Europe, to New York, Australia, or anywhere. You would know everything about that location, but you cannot take anything with you. You cannot buy something in New York and bring it back to San Francisco with you. Why? Consciousness is in the yin realm. It can see New York, but cannot do anything there. The other is that you, your inherent Buddha nature is free. The Buddha nature is young and has great uses using the entire substance. Even when you are in San Francisco, you may reach your hand out and get something from New York. Is that amazing? Is that spiritual powers? This is a state of liberation without restraint or constraint, not impeded or obstructed. One chichilio cosm, for instance, can be as close as if it were in the same room. You can accomplish anything you want in the world. This is the young Buddha nature. If you are liberated and free, then you will experience this kind of state. People will, with such states do not easily reveal themselves. Do not try to make me buy some German product for you because I can do it with my spiritual powers. This is forbidden. When the Buddha was in the world, he told all of his disciples to, not to use their spiritual powers. You have to leave this world if you use your spiritual powers. Since most people do not have spiritual powers, they will be shocked by your spiritual powers. In short, when you can do things as you wish, that is in the young realm. When there are things you cannot do, that is in the yin realm and a function of the consciousness. Every one of us must be clear about this. The sound of no are flows. What are no are flows? It is no ignorance. Without ignorance, there is no are flow. With even just a bit of ignorance, you cannot be free of our flow. Ignorance is the root of afflictions. Ignorance leads to numerous afflictions. The absence of ignorance spells zero afflictions. How come you are greedy? It is because of your ignorance. How come you are hateful? It is because of your ignorance. How come you are deluded? It is because of your ignorance. Ignorance is the root of afflictions. How come you have desire, lust? It is also because of your ignorance. Since you are unclear at the start, you create all kinds of karma. Were you to have the sound of no outflows, you would be free from ignorance. Therefore, Shakyamuni Buddha emitted all kinds of sounds to make all beings become enlightened through sound. The substance of true teachings here comes from purification through hearing sound. The fundamental substance of Buddhism in the Saha world is in sound. We do the Buddha's work with sounds, hence there are all kinds of sounds on proclaiming, praising, and explaining. Sutra, the sound of wisdom, the sound of great wisdom, the sound of the lion's roar, the sound of great lion's roar, the sound of thunder clouds, and the sound of great thunder clouds. After he had uttered indescribably many sounds, Commentary, the sound of wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom changes delusion. There is no delusion with the presence of wisdom. There is no wisdom with the presence of delusion. These two do not exist simultaneously. If me, let me tell you something else that is easier to understand. Wisdom is delusion. Delusion is wisdom. Some say, I must wise because I am deluded now. Let me use this delusion to be as deluded as I possibly can. If you can be, uh, be as deluded as possible, you have real wisdom. Some say, Dharma Master, I do not believe this idea of yours. 
Wisdom is delusion. Delusion is wisdom. What I see is that deluded individuals always do muddled things, while wise people do things with a clear understanding. Not bad. What you say is very much correct, and what I say is very much incorrect. Why? It is because delusion can turn into wisdom. So I say delusion is wisdom, since wisdom can also turn into delusion. I say wisdom is also delusion. A few days ago, when I talked about intelligence results from anonymous good deeds, I made this principle very clear already. But I am bringing it out again. How come you would not be deluded if you were wise? It is because the wise people have real wisdom and have reached real liberation. How is that? Wise, with, uh, wise individuals do not do muddled things. If you are deluded, you always do muddled things and avoid intelligent things. Deluded individuals are not free and are passive. Wise individuals are not passive. They have real will and wisdom. Regardless of what comes, they recognize the situation and proceed if it is a good thing to do and do not proceed if it is not a good thing to do. They have true judgment and true ability to select the right dramas. Deluded individuals do not. They will do them even though they know something is clear wrong. It's clearly wrong. For instance, we know that gambling is something bad, but they think that they may have a chance in a million at winning and getting rich. This one thought of ignorance and greed led them to wish for Christ, for, for riches. They end up losing all their assets. They still do not wake up after they lose all that. They think, I'm just one step away from winning and getting rich. For example, a dollar something buys you eight numbers on a lotto ticket. If you select the matching set, you will win millions. But you lost by one number, so you buy again. Thinking will win for sure. Is that delusion? If gamblers, if gamblers can all win, then casinos will not make any profit. Some people smoke opium. Some people say opium is a drug that is harmful, but deluded individuals will try it. They try it once and they do not feel that they got anything out of it. So they try it once more, twice more, three times, four times, again and again. Once they experiment with it, they become addicts. They cannot do without it by then. Is that delusion? Someone perfectly sound is addicted by opium to drip snot and tears. One is comfortable all over, so one has to get more money to buy this stuff to support oneself. Delusion made, not, made you not free. How come you are not free? Opium smokers believe smoking opium is a form of freedom and enjoy it. But is it freedom when you are not smoke, uh, smoking it and crave it? Everything else is the same. Doing something that you should not do is delusion and not wisdom. You will not be messed up if you are wise. You ought not do what you should not do. The sound of great wisdom. Extremely wise individuals see straight to the bottom of things and do not discover problems only when things go wrong. They can forecast whether they can do something or not. Perhaps the result will be unfavorable if they act with great knowledge and great wisdom, they are fought doing muddled things. What is great knowledge and great wisdom? Investigating the Buddha drama is great knowledge and great wisdom. Only people who investigate the Buddha drama can be truly free, which is great wisdom. The sound of the lion's roar. Lions are the king of the jungle. His roar frightens all the animals so that they cannot stand straight and are not prepared to run. 
even ferocious wild beasts such as tigers and wolves are at a loss due to fear. All the beasts hear his roars and their heads split open. They are frightened, dumb. The sound of the great lion's roar. An average lion's roar is severe enough. Now imagine how the sound of the great lion's roar may be heard far and wide. The sound of thunder clouds sounds and like thunderbolts in the clouds and the sounds of great thunder clouds. This sound of thunder is even greater than the average sound, meaning that the Buddha Dharma is like a great cloud in the sky that universally shines upon the great earth, providing shade everywhere. When thunder burns, it is heard everywhere around the world, symbolizing how the Buddha Dharma reaches the all beings pervasively. Beings pervasively. Rain will pour with clouds and thunder. Rain symbolizes the Buddha Dharma universally nourishing all beings' faculties so that everyone is nurtured by the rain of Dharma. The Dharma rain falls and bigger trees will receive more Dharma rain, while smaller trees will receive less Dharma rain. Flowers and grass will also receive the amount of rain they need. The Buddha Dharma is the same way. Living beings receive according to their needs. Every kind of Buddha Dharma makes every type of being nourished so that they extend their wisdom life in the Dharma body and uncover great wisdom. After he, Shakyamuni Buddha, has uttered indescribable many, a number so large that cannot be said. Sounds such as those, sounds such as those described above.